Everything Homemade! Hi everyone, I'm Rita with Everything Homemade and this is the second video after my Garden Prep 2017 video. That video I showed you exactly how I was going to make the bed, the exact design of the garden um, that I am preparing. Now we moved here last year in September so this is the first time that I'm gardening um, this particular garden spot that somebody else has made. I'm going to be tweaking it but I'm also going to be finding out what's in the dirt and um, as I've already found out and you'll find that out as we go. So these, to recap, these are the starting plants that I have started. I have cucumbers here, tomatoes over here, corn, and spaghetti squash. Now, they're looking really, really good. They sit out on my porch here day and night. Um, they're completely hardened off. So when I plant my garden in northern Alberta, I usually start after May long weekend. For the reason, basically, is that more times than not, we get a snowstorm. We get miserable weather. Um, and I refuse to plant any warm crops till after May long weekend. That's fairly, fairly safe. Now, there's always the um, exception to that, to that rule where you get a freak storm or a frost. But that, that holds true most of the time. Um, the other thing is, is that you can get away with your red beets and carrots and peas your, and lettuce and Swiss chard before May long weekend. You can actually get that into the ground um, as soon as you can. Um, when, like, sometimes I even do it the first week of May. But this year, I'm pushing myself a little bit later because in all honesty... I didn't even know I was going to plant this garden until May 1st. So everything here that you see is has been started literally at the end of April. Um, I will do a video later on on how I got this to come so fast, completely natural, um, very simply. But I won't get into that right now. What I am going to show you is how to seed your garden. So I'm going to be planting red beets. I'm going to show you how to plant carrots, dill, lettuce, um, Swiss chard. I'm going to just stick with those this year. Or I can you move a little bit from the door here, please? I'm going to stick with those this year. I'm not going to do peas this year. I'm not doing beans. So some of them I will show you next year when my garden spot gets bigger. And I actually plant this garden spot over here that um, will be ready for 2018. So without further ado, let's start with our seeds. And as the week progresses, I will transplant these and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do that because each one needs special attention and special care to itself. So we'll start with seeds and I'm going to be posting pretty regular here. As you kind of can see, I'm almost posting every day to every second day because there's so much happening. It's springtime and I got so much to share. So let's get started. There we go. Sorry, we had technical issues here. So again, I don't know where we ended, but we're going to make a row here. Um, it's going to be about a half inch deep, okay, Ocean? Mm -hmm. So you're going to go through and you're going to just continue this. Now, it's hard for me to do it with one hand and the camera on the other. And you're going to go through and try to just kind of go through the whole thing to the end. I am not looking for perfection here. Straight rows, straight and me... Um, with rows or anything like that just doesn't happen. So um, plants don't know if they're in a straight row or how perfect it is. What it is important is depth. What is important is that they are covered. The other thing that's important is that they have enough moisture in germinating. Um, that's the biggest thing. And let your kids do this. They've got to practice. Yeah, keep going straight. Is it a little bit harder? The dirt's actually pretty stiff. It is because it's freshly rained on, which is really good because it needed a lot of moisture. Keep, keep, don't go too close to the edge. Yeah, we're going to have some interesting rows, but I really like to involve my children. Good job. So what, finish to the end, then we're going to plant this row. What we're going to do is we're actually going to make another row here, here, and here. So in a total of four rows, we're going to plant Celendria beets, and what I like about yeah. these beets um, is because they are longer, okay? Yeah, follow it right back. That's a very good idea. 
Um, they're longer and they take up less space. Okay, so I'm going to put on the pause for a second. We're going to pull out the seeds. We're going to spill them in and then we're going to plant this row. Then we're going to come back. It probably take us about an hour to two hours to plant all these rows with some breaks in the middle. Then we're going to start back with carrots. There you go. Okay, so let's get the red beet seeds ready. Okay, Ocean? Yes. Good job. Okay, so these guys are already planting. So let's go through what they are doing. These are the seeds. Just give me a second. Right here are red beet seeds. And they are planting about, oh, two to three inches apart. And they're literally just dropping them. Now, where are they? Right here. They are literally just dropping them in the row one cluster at a time. Now remember, every red beet seed is a cluster of several plants. And so they're taking turns and they're going down this whole entire row and they just drop it in. Now, while they do that, I'm gonna show you how to close up this row. Now, this is the row here. There's the seed right there. And this dirt, I'm just going to gently push it over it on both sides and lightly push it down. I don't want to hard pack this because this um, garden dirt will hard pack itself with the sun and I don't want um, the seeds to be stuck and can't pop through. So that's what they're doing. They're doing a fantastic job, both of them. And um, that's all it is. Very, very simple to plant red beets. The seeds are nice because they're bigger seeds. And I like to take the time to plant them and space them apart so I have less thinning to do and less wastage of seed. Now, Annika here is waiting for me to start planting here. So Annika, grab, grab a seed. Grab a seed and drop it in. Good girl, drop it in. And then grab another seed and just leave a little bit of space and drop it in. You know what, it might take a little longer to plant a garden, you know, while you help them, but but the benefits are awesome because no ocean is eight and she could probably be competent enough almost to plant an entire garden by herself, which is just amazing. So teamwork, uh, it, teach your children. Um, they are your, one of your greatest helpers and you are grooming the next generation on how to plant, how to provide for themselves, which is um, a skill that is completely beginning to fade away and be forgotten. Um, and, and it is so important. So that is how we plant red beets. We're going to work on this row and we're going to work on this row and uh, the next will be carrots. So oh, Dova came out here and she is helping covering the rows. Look at her go. So she's helping me cover all the red beet rows here. So we take turns. Um, right now, Ocean has finished planting. So she's playing with Annika, building something over there. A garden. A garden. And Nova is helping me over here and we have covered some of the rows. So we just keep on working at it. And we are going to continue planting red beets um, these three rows will be red beets as it looks like we have lots and lots of seed. Um, so that is really, really, really exciting here, which will make, oh, hopefully we'll make a, a couple hundred, uh, quarts of, um, red beets, canned red beets for the winter. Sounds good to me, doesn't it, Nova? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about watering. Now that the red beet row is almost finished being um, covered. No, it was doing the last one. Ocean's filling this up with dugout water. One, if you have chlorinated water, you really don't want to use that. It can kill or stunt your um, plant growth. The other thing is I like to use a watering can that looks like this. So it sprinkles the water over um, when you water. The other important thing, if you don't got boards to cover up your rows, You've got to be out here a couple of times a day watering your rows. Sometimes I've had, you know, where I'm uh, watering for two to three, two hours a day just until things are germinated um, to make sure it depends on how hot it is. 
just leave it for a second. So I have my whole group here. Orion, thank you so much. He has brought me... That's okay. He has brought me sticks. Now, what do I need sticks for? It is to mark my rows. So every row that we did, I'm going to put in a stick just so I have an idea about where my rows were. Thank you, Orion. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, so if your ground is really, really... Um, dry you want to water your red beets in and then make sure they do not dry out get them let them germinate water them until um, they've got enough foliage that they can and enough root that they can um, handle it no um, and then you should only be able need to water as needed just make sure they don't dry out now you don't want it soggy you for surely don't want it soggy and you don't want um, them to be sitting in that water at all. So, Nova, how are we doing? Good. Good? Awesome. I could not do it without all of you children. Thank you so much. So, I don't, I'm not personally yeah. going to water today because we just got 15 centimeters of rain. Um, and uh, I will see what my rows look like tonight with the hot sun. So I'm just going to monitor it. Um, and then I'll probably be watering once in the morning and once in the evening. And if you need to water at lunchtime, that's the biggest hurdle people run into is they plant the garden and then they don't water it. And everything dries up, nothing germinates. And the biggest thing is to get those plants germinated, Get let their roots get into the ground once the roots get into the ground even by an inch ever they can suck the moisture a little bit deeper but this 10 7 to 10 days to germinate is the critical time that you've got to be on top of your garden in my experience especially here um, when right now we can have 11 hours of sunlight and it's warm it's supposed to be 21 today so I'll monitor this. I'll probably have to water it again um, tonight. So off to the next row. And, uh, and I think I've covered a lot of the basics. Um, and that goes with all plants. And now I'm just going to shoot um, or film when we switch to a different plant at the beginning to show you um, a technique for every different plant that, that we are planting. But after that, the watering's the same. Um, marking the rows is the same how I make the rows is the same the depth may change but other than that that's your basic and then I will shoot separate videos with um, the transplanting on other plants because that's a whole nother ball game okay are you ready for the second row Ocean yep excellent